they talk together. Now, even if they, they, they've tried this with, ju with juries, 12 people, 12 individuals, they've heard all of the stuff from the lawyers and the attorneys, then they have to write down what they think. First degree murder, accident, whatever. They, they write it down. Then they put the paper away, and then they deliver it. Very often, after two or three people have said the same thing, even people who had a completely different verdict will agree with the ones who spoke first. If you let them keep the paper, and if you tell them to stick to their paper and to defend their position, the outcome will become completely different. Because you might still have 12 people with 12 different opinions, but if you don't listen to all 12 opinions, all of a sudden the first three will be heard, and everybody will all of a sudden agree with it. That's not because we don't think individually. That's because we were born and raised to mimic others, to comply with the group. This is instinctive behavior. Children learn to walk and talk by mimicking others. Mimicking others is usually, for the group, for human beings, a very good thing. When you want to come to an innovative, creative solution, yes. <laughs> I could put this more explicitly, but you understand. It's really not a good idea. Which is why Group B had the chance to use all four brain cells, we're all for no reason. <laughs> 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 I'm just checking if it's okay. But they used the brain power of all four individuals, and they chose not to. They chose, I think it was in the end, a team decision to just say, whatever she asks, we'll do something else. Okay? But you had the chance to do it separately, and you would have come to a completely different outcome. That team C, did not get any instructions from them. They were completely free. They didn't have any examples beforehand that they could orient on. They didn't have the instruction to work separately. And they developed their own group chemistry. Now, Art, you were in the team. And I think you were the one who was, in the beginning, trying to organize and arrange, and then pull back. Is that how you observed it, uh, Frannik? Frannik? Yes. You didn't know. <laughs> okay. It worked out. So at the beginning, <coughs> when, when, when I went and I did it, I was able to see myself that it worked fine. Everybody made a contribution. Yes. Because many times when there's a team, teams are usually four to seven <coughs> people that works best. When there's a team and there's no appointed leader, some people have this, let's say, inner drive to control mm -hmm. a bit more than other people do. And they are, some, some of us will look to, for, to find control until they see, oh, it's working anyway, and then they can pull back. Some people will not believe that it's working anyway, and will start to try to keep in control. Now, one important thing is when there is a leader in the team, is that they drive the chemistry. They drive what is going to be the outcome. So apart from the various aspects of human behavior and team behavior that I've said to you, the most important thing that I have learned, the most important thing to make sure that you use the individual brain power of every member on the team, the individual creativity, is to actually silence the leader. I will now shut up, but if you have any questions, <laughs> you may ask. Yes, please. Silence what the leader. Andreas? Andreas? Silence the leader, is that meant as the formal leader or the natural leader of the group? You know, the authority figure? Very, very good question. Because it goes both ways. In certain cultures, the formal and natural leader will be the same person, right? Because in certain cultures, people don't question authority. So by nature, either the person with the most seniority, white hair, gray hair, or the person with the highest title, the director, the VPE, the, the, the VP, the, the CEO, will by nature be accepted as everybody as, as the leader, and others will actually wait for him or her to act before they do. In other cultures, it's more accepted as a team, everybody acts like equals, and then the person with, let's say, the most temperament, or the most drive to control situations, will take over. In both cases, it will be actually 
best behavior to silence the leader, which may mean in cultures with an authoritative style that the leader has to physically remove himself from the team, because otherwise the others will not take up or step up. 